on the 17th of July. It is about uh, 13 hours into the day, about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Didn't end up falling asleep until about 9 o'clock this morning, so I've got about a total of about 4 hours of sleep on the outside of things. Turned into like, oh hey, uh, Ended up waking up around 12:30, and I got up into some gaming, meditation off for today. Better check the right. But anyways, we're off. Yeah, so we're into our deep dive project now, uh, and it's going to encompass a large chunk of the uh, uh, western. Western Enlightenment. We're going to look into some of the mythology uh, created by the beautiful so called European myth. And we'll see how Lionel, in terms of his behavior and some of the things, some of his views, how and where he fits into them. In other words, we're going to be using him, using him as an edge piece to build some sort of understanding or a structure in terms of the puzzle. To do a bit of adjustment in the mirror, and th th this is how, in terms of a, a, a puzzle like this, a research puzzle, uh, this is how you do it. You find people where you can build off of, and Lionel is one of them. I was hoping for Yvette Carnell, but the, the Yvette doesn't seem to. Uh, she seems to have given up. That's what happened to a lot of people. A lot of people have, have given up. Uh, uh, I had these sources, and the, one by one, they were all destroyed. Uh, they gave up. Uh, it was, you see you're getting maybe one or two people this is with what they see when your uh, shadow band your metrics go way down that doesn't necessarily mean you're not reaching out to people i noticed that uh it takes me about a month before i start noticing people start starting to copying what i do and that means if they're copying what i'm doing that means they're watching the vlogs even though i'm not being credited uh by the metrics that's being being watched and so that becomes uh, something that is sort of okay. Oh my God, I am having an effect. I just feel that after realize that, like in some of these games, you know, like, well, like Lord's Mobile, things are going to happen immediately. They'll take months and years, you know. So you just have to be patient. The, 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 the whole thing with Lord's Mobile as a simulator is you really do have to be patient. And it's about a practice of patience in that, that things do take time to get rolling for influences to get out there and the goal is if you, and with QLAR you're not actually making any big gains what you're trying to do is you're trying to change minds and the goal of mind that you want to change, with the, the whole goal in terms of the direction you want people to start thinking is you want to start reducing anger and reducing the amount of violence out there because that's a, but when anger is reduced so is uh, the violence so that's where our goal is that has somewhat been achieved, but the thing is, you always achieve, achieve things in partial success. It's never, it's never entirely uh, an easy success or, or, or a full success. It's only a bits and pieces, and you've got to recognize these bits and pieces in order to really move forward. Uh, and this is sort of the same thing with the research. The research is done in bits and pieces. It takes months and even years to really move along. Uh, the pace isn't a, the pace isn't really anything sort of called stressful. I've had the pace is kind of leisurely. You can tell anything about these conversations that we're, 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 things are and you move along at a leisurely pace. Uh, they not a high stress environment. I was going to 
looking at now, the thing is, it's not that the movement is, isn't significant, that movement is a movement. It just, and the thing is, you really can't rush it. These things take time. They don't, they're not going to happen immediately. So, even if you try to rush it, you try to, you know, bring yourself into a high trip and you know, hype yourself up, it's not going to work. And part of it is that the, the, when you're going out and looking for sources, other people's lectures, like my, my, our, our discussions here are about 25 minutes in length. That's our, that's our, that's our average. That's where I keep the vlogs to about 25 minutes in length. Others, when you go into these sources, you go into these lectures, they're three hours in length. So you have this, so if you have more than one source or more than one lecture to attend, and this is all done online, it's all virtual. It's been like this for a while. There were a lot of, of people have been in terms of in terms of popularity, what people know about these things. There was a lot more before Zoom. Zoom wasn't anything new. It was just it was, that Zoom made online conferencing popular. But the online conferences, the webs, uh, the webinars, uh, web conferences have been going on for a long time now. So there's a lot of them out there. You can actually do whole rabbinical conferences online. And you can actually go back and see that they've been there for a while. So and then, then people ask, well, how do you know about you know, you know Judaica and stuff like that? Well, I went to the rabbinical conferences. You know, you go in, you, you listen to the lectures, you take your notes. You have some thoughts and ideas in terms of what is what. So, you know, you know, no taking is is whatever strikes your mind. Sometimes the first time you're taking the notes, you'll find some things interesting. You just sort of drop them down. But at other times, that's not necessarily the case. You, you, you may not find anything interesting. So you may not take notes. Other times, I've gotten to the point now because I'm so I'm good at note taking now. Uh, I don't take uh, actual notes during the lecture. I don't busy myself writing particular points now. Uh, because I, ha I do have them recorded. I sort of pull them off the internet, so I do have them to go back to review. And in the review, you can go back and do more things that you did before. But So most of my notes now are mental. There is stuff I sort of, oh, that's kind of in my mind, I say, oh, that's kind of interesting. And you have, as you find others that are interesting as well. Uh, you begin to build a library of notes. But of course, instead of every once in a while, like your, like your summers and the, the Christmas break, that's where you go back and reorganize your notes into notebooks. And this is how you can sort of see where they're structured. Uh, you, you can take these ideas that we talk about, and this is the, evolve, the evolution of ideas. We can see how things we can see how things evolve, and we, we can actually organize a structure. And as I said, as we ride, I get more and more used to the scooter, and I get more and more used to doing the signaling, the turn signal, so I can get the thunder faster. So. What happens with, with Hegel? Hegel provides a, a sort of called, what's called a broad view definition that provides sort of uh, you don't really have to go in depth into Hegel to sort of figure out what he was talking about. In other words, depth of requirements for Hegel aren't what they need to be in terms of let's say Newton or Leibniz. Newton and Leibniz, what you're doing is you're looking into calculus. You're going through the history of calculus. This is where you, this is where you can add in um, why the Nazis chose um, 
why not the Nazis chose the swastika? But they had a lot of, a lot of what Newton and Leibniz were actually working on to develop the math, to develop calculus. Uh, involved the very things that uh, the Nazis were, were into in terms of uh, what we call the Gnostic path. And as I said before, the Gnostic path exists on the right and the left-hand path. And as we talk about the Gnostic path left and right, uh, the right-hand path is basically Buddha, uh, uh, Krishna, Vishnu, uh, and Christ. Those are the right-hand paths. And they're non-violent. They're, they're, they're about being spiritual. Where you, you have on the left-hand path with Baphomet, uh, Alistair Crowley, and a, a host of other uh, sort of uh, characters, if you will. Uh, the left-hand path is about being very violent, and physical, and, and, and ultimately it's about self-destruction, this is what we're seeing now. First is chaos, and then there's self-destruction. So, the West isn't at a point, is a very, very bad point, where it's at a point of self-destruction. Uh, this is why we're seeing a lot of the chaos that we're seeing. The thing that East, the, the Christ is not the Christ of the West on the, on the left, on, on the right hand path. The left hand path, right, uh, 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 the Western Christ, the, what, the Christ of Europe, is on the left hand path he's war, he's, because, of the, because of the war, because of the war and punishment requirement. Uh, it's actually on the left hand path. Anything that requires warfare, Physical warfare is left hand path. January 17th, time to hit the road again, it's around uh, 6.30 in the evening, so uh, 18 hours and 30 minutes. Oh. And we'll pick up where we left off, this is just popping into my mind right now. And that is the comparison, the difference between Eastern Christianity and Western Christianity. Most people only know the Western Christianity, but uh, there is an Eastern Christianity, and it is the original. The Western Christianity really began about a thousand AD. and was uh, sort of brought into existence with Europe uh, as the uh, Holy Roman Empire. I mean, the European existence is So Europe is fundamentally the Holy Roman Empire you need to go back to in terms of your top reference. I mean, that's the thing, everything exists within a context. And the context that everything exists in for modern day 
is within the Holy Roman Empire, which began about a thousand AD, uh, with the advent of the new papacy. But really, As I said before, the Eastern Christian Church did not approve of war. This is why Christ was martyred. The example for all Christians in 1000 AD was the example of Christ. As you went to your death, not fighting, not killing other people, but peacefully. And that's where you believe in Christ. That's, that, that's why they died. What? No other reason. So Christ set himself as the example in the Christian church, church of being kind, being merciful to the least person, um, acting, being humble. Act, you know, seeing yourself as the lowest of the low. In other words, never placing yourself above others. In other words, one of the things that was majorly proud on you, Jesus, in the, in the gospel, was self-righteousness. Christ did not behave in a self-righteous manner. But well, this is what you see over and over again in the Western Christian Church, is this position of self-righteousness, where they have the right to do X, Y, and Z, and those who give dare to question their authority are heathens and savages, and therefore they get to be slaughtered or greeted as slaves. And this is how, well, well the, prior to 1000 AD, within the Roman Empire, uh, Christians were ordered to release their slaves, to not own slaves. It was forbidden. Christians own slaves. However, Roman Catholicism returned a large chunk It turned a large chunk of the Christian idea ideologies of pacism as, as, as equality, brothers and sisters. Uh, it turned it into a uh, basically a, a pagan system where you now had a master-servant relation. In other words, they ignored God the Father and focused on God Almighty. And this was the creation of Europe and the papacy. 
And this is fundamentally the situation that we're in today. But what happens is that people fail, fail, and this is what the way things work work out, is they fail to put put um, the current situation in the context of any form of history. So they really don't understand what they're talking about when they're saying things. Because once you, under, once you bring in the, the, the context, the proper, content, the, proper, the proper sort of background, you now begin to see what the larger picture is, and you can place the pieces you're looking at, the current pieces you're looking at, in the context of the puzzle. So, this is the way to frame uh, the, uh, what you see in the newspaper. A large chunk of journalism is simply basically storytelling. There, there is a, maybe maybe a kernel of truth to it, but the majority of it is simply uh, storytelling. It is uh, uh, fiction. They don't even call it fake news, it's just fiction. left out of the conversation and so what happens is that there's a bit of peer pressure in sort of saying oh well yeah I understand that and now I agree with this and even though you don't necessarily do you don't, you don't necessarily agree with it you agree with it simply because well this is what your friends are talking about and you don't want to seem out of place or sometimes in this case with liberals if you're a conservative person, often what happens is that liberals are intolerant of any views that are not their own. They get very angry anytime their ideas are challenged. And so if you want to stay friends with them, you give your own ideas and simply uh, follow along. Have a little bit of a chit chat. This is, something I, this is something I've seen. I've seen people who, in order to have their liberal friends, even though they're conservative, give up their conservative views, conservative perspectives, uh, because uh, it makes their liberal friends angry. Ironically enough, I've never seen this on, on, in, in the reverse. I've never seen people on the conservative side of things sort of reject people because they don't, they're not conservative. I'm pretty sure it, occur, it occurs, but at the same time, I've never really seen it. Or I've seen it quite significant, or quite often, on the liberal side. 